Hello boys, my name is Kuyoshi. Welcome back to my way through of Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle for Switch. This is a 100% playthrough. In the last video, we left off in having just finished the very first world of the game, Ancient Gardens. Now we're going to try and do the same thing and finish the second world. Sure, but I'm, uh, I'll just let it say it in a minute. Just give me a minute while I walk over there. Sherbert Desert! Yeah, that's what it is called. In the last video, we kind of tried... I to unlock it, which we were successful at doing. Now we're going to actually, um, do stuff. Oh, I just... Oh yeah, that's right, I can't do anything here. I did try to look at the extra stuff, and yeah. Fortunately, a lot of uh, this game, in terms of exploration, shit, is just locked behind you doing certain things. And I have a partic very particular mind to try and make it a bit easier to get through. So now we're in a new world. Wonderful, this wedge thriving desert is now partially a frozen race land. The arrival of this world would seem to be as welcome as a skunk in a building alley. Hell again. They seem to we got separated. Again? He thinks it's fun. Just throw out the map and let your heart be your guide is his motto. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's fine for me. I'm starting to get worried. I'll stay here in case he comes back. Alright. Okay, we got some power orbs. That's actually the main thing we want to find in those small chests, is the power orbs, if we can. I did check power orb stuff. Uh, looked like everybody already got the stuff they need. So this will be our first time going to a completely different world now, which means the monsters have improved significantly. Thankfully, we have, like, a completely new setup to do. So, Mario just got a new ability called Empower, which you saw me just use now. Uh, it lets us do a bunch of movement within quick stuff. Luigi also has his own buff, Itchy Feet. This is where we actually start to use it a little bit. Itchy Feet is going to come into big play, especially later on. Anyway... This is an early battle, we're not going to focus too much on cover, instead we're going to do what the game probably wants us to do, and try to position ourselves in a good point to where we can um, hopefully hit something with 100% accuracy, because, well, that's the main point of the game, right? Okay, we can't get Mario all the way around, so we'll just go ahead and fire at the closest enemy instead. Oh, okay. You might have noticed, um, sometimes the shot counter thing randomly zooms in after a shot setup. Uh, apparently there's like a hidden quirk to that, where unless a specific scenario takes place, uh, if you see that ever happen, that means, uh, your shot is guaranteed hit. And I don't think many people would have known that, just going into this normally, but, um... Yeah, that is actually a thing that happens. Um, your shots can't miss if, when you fire, it does like a weird camera angle change. That only happens when happens when it's a guaranteed hit. So you can tell immediately if it's hit or not. So like right there, it hit the barrier, but uh, you could also see that it didn't do the camera change that time. Alright. Anyways, Itchy Feet is definitely going to come into play later, particularly for uh, moving around the map faster. Okay, I don't... 
We have a good way to block stuff with Luigi. So we're gonna put him here. I'm gonna go with his guaranteed hit here, since we didn't get hit before. Did not crit. That's annoying. Okay, good. Oh, you can see they have a lot to do with abilities. Each, like I said, each red share has their own unique ability. The hoppers now have abilities to double team, do double team jumps. And shield, in addition to that. We need to heal now. Eventually we'll be buffing that heal to do a lot more damage. Can't get both of them around. We'll just uh, remove this guy's shield first. So, yeah. The big thing about the later worlds is they start to get a bit trickier by adding in more weird things the enemy could do. Or, I guess, not necessarily weird things, more like regular actual normal abilities that the enemy could do like the enemies just start getting smarter like they get their own abilities now and most of the even least to do i'm gonna try to prioritize the ziggies first if we can <laughs> okay that was a little bit unnecessary but it works oh yeah mario time Okay, only two characters can unfortunately sit behind cover. We can't have Mario team jump on too many of them, unfortunately. So I'm gonna do the next best thing and actually just run up and melee this enemy. Maybe this melee range will be enough to him. Nope. Okay, just barely. This. It's actually doubles just as much as doing my main attack now that it's been upgraded. Power is now worn off. This is a pretty stride cop for most of the game, because uh, obviously having both Mario and Luigi for both extra damage at the start and other stuff uh, could let you do other stuff. Of course, each of the bells start to get a lot more rougher by the end. That guy is hiding behind cover, so we're gonna have to make move closer to him just slightly, like this much. So you can use this to get around the cover. That's actually in our big use of the same is to just straight up ignore the cover completely. Let's it go around it. Alright. Because that was just the intro battle. There's still more to do. Since we're 
slightly lower on elf than normal, we're gonna have to pretty soon. Put our buffs on and heal up from the last battle. This is the main reason why I'm putting Rabbit Peach in every single battle that I do for a while because it's actually kind of important. Which is also why I'm here in a very particular way because I want her to be able to automatically uh, do a bunch of stuff. I don't think I have a good way to hit any of these other enemies. And that one we could just defeat by running up to the side. So I'm just gonna do this now. It's probably smarter to do something different, but I was thinking I could just beat this enemy right here and there. And then move into this pipe to get into cover. We'll take cover here. Looks like I can shoot an enemy from very far away. That's actually another big thing. The big advantage of Leiji is his range is also very long, so he can shoot from like 15 years away sometimes. Not have to worry about it. Okay, unfortunately, someone has to take some of the bait. I'll probably have Ravage take most of the damage here. This actually does more damage. Just as much damage as my melee weapon, so I don't think I even need to use anything other than my main weapon. The priority is going to be trying to upgrade the main weapons for the other characters as soon as possible. And starting in the later setup, since Mario has to be in every battle, but almost Rabbit Peach too. But mainly Peach as well. We need to make sure that they are constantly upgrading their weapons every single time we get. Alright. And Peach cannot do anything else. I'm gonna try for this one because we him. It'll take it out. But we did not take him out. That one doesn't move, just uh, did its hero sight ability. We can throw this down, do a bit of damage, but that actually isn't upgraded. But this also isn't guaranteed it. Yeah, whatever, we'll try it anyway. Put the shield first. Oh, I just realized the uh, shield apparently reduces your movement by a square or two. Just now figured that out. Okay, uh, our characters need to move a bit closer, I think. I'm not gonna have you do it. Mario is more HP, so Mario is gonna move first. We can actually trigger them to do their firing thing. Ah, uh, okay. I cannot go close enough. Just a liar warning, this is the part of the game where I'm a, the least experienced with. For one, I haven't played World 2 and gosh you knows how long. I mainly practiced World 1 just so I wouldn't lose time early on on it. Or just waste a lot of time in it early on. Okay. VG, I'm pretty much just gonna try and set up so he can maybe at least hit the enemy. Knows, but he probably won't be able to, so I'll just set him up here instead. That did not trigger the range of that enemy. 
Oh, okay, well that is at least far enough that Luigi can hit the cover of this. Oh my, okay, that's a hidden cover. Uh, we're actually just gonna go ahead and fire again. So now he's honeyed and can't even move. And I think he wasted his hero side too. So just like us, the enemies also have a problem with cover messing up. So if you destroy their cover, they'll be very vulnerable to stuff. And of course, that was a special cover, so it did automatically dealt them a super effect. Yeah, that's this game's version of status effects. So special items or whatever. Now the main difference with this chapter is compared to the other ones, we start getting more coins after every chapter. We also start getting more options to find coins. But in exchange, the world's gonna take longer to explore now. So far, nothing in this area. Okay, we found some of them. It's gotten bigger. Must be a way to stop it. Yeah. Two steps forward, one step back. To find Spunny, you must defeat the rabbits who plague you at every step. Victory frees them from the Mega Bug on high. Play close attention when you defeat it. You'll see that the Mega Bug gains some of the strength it lost when it merged with your foal. <laughs> Shins that rise to the sky after you cloud up or someone senseless or a clue. Yes, I see. Now it frees them from the Mega Bug's fluid, which makes the Mega Bug stronger. Very clever, I. Oh dear, that's not good, isn't it? Is to find Spawny and stop him from creating any more abominations that only add substance to the story above. As you would say, to go. First to find Toad, then Spawny. Alright. Alright. So we already upgraded our primary weapons with our main characters. Next, we're gonna upgrade our secondary weapons with our main characters. Mari is once again the priority here. We're gonna get him the bounce one because uh, bounce is uh, a lot more damage. Then, since you don't have a good weapon, we're gonna get you the one that pushes. This also looks really cool. It's Red Peach and... Mm, I, Rager, Mario... Pretty much are going to be in every battle because of the way our team is up. We have to upgrade the weapons whenever we get a chance. It's going to lose every single from here on out. That is always our priority. And then, second priority is probably uh, get other characters and weapons, and then save up some money so that other characters can also just straight up get their upgrades, because there's going to be more characters to unlock later. And then, of course, we have to do skills in a particular order. Mario's kind of a mixed character. I actually kind of want him to be all around, but... I think for starters, we're gonna try and increase his health a little bit more by getting him these two skills first. That way, uh, he doesn't die as easily. There's also a uh, high, higher ground damage we can get. And then I'll kind of just go for whatever uh, happens to have uh, extra effects. Like, Cleansing Jump is actually really good for Mario since he has to be in every single battle, and so. It could be a good way to cleanse status effects later. 
Of course, you could just choose not to have it, though. Alright. So this is the main priority we want for Rev Peach, is to have her so that she can heal as much as possible. That's the priority skill we named. Then later we'll probably get the turn recharge. We don't really need a heal's effect of this on um, each, since it's not going to do much. Alright, um, uh, mm, Meiji, he's not going to be used for much fun, so... We could pretty much just get him whatever. Heck, he's built around da ashes anyway. Yeah, let's uh, increase his dash damage first, and then we can give him an extra dash later if he still adds it not. Just make him do a bunch of dashes. Because he's pretty much built around dashing. And then for Luigi, we want to boost uh, Itchy Feet's range of effect to this first, probably. And then we kind of just want to go whatever. Although, early on, there's not going to be a lot of upgrades we can do. Luigi has a really nice high ground bonus. We'll probably get that after we get the other stuff. Oh, actually, no, wait. We want Luigi to have area of movement eventually. You know what? I'm just going to... Not at all. I'm going to just get him extra movement right now. Mario's going to save up for the HP recovery one. So he's going to wait a bit. So the idea of our eye builds is... Well, Vayu's going to be actually more or less an all-round character, but I want him to have extra HP first, since he has to be in every single battle. Because if he constantly have extra HP, he could die a lot easier, and we'd want to make sure that we keep that from happening. And... Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, that's right. You have to vase and lower the block. So the puzzles start to get trickier, as you can see. But in exchange, we also get a lot more power orbs for doing stuff. Before, we were getting nothing but hidden unlockables and nothing else. But now in World 2, we start to get a lot more power orbs at random. Oh, we got the mid boss babe, so now we can just listen to the cool mid boss theme music whenever we want. Anyways, this session will be mostly focused on Veil 2. For some reason, I ran out of time to finish it. I could always finish it tomorrow, but... That's basically... Uh, uh, I'm a, for the first few parts, though, I'm basically going to be segmenting this based off of the worlds. Alright. Pretty easy puzzle there. Mostly just there to make sure that you know what to do. I like how we didn't take long to clear the first chapter, but now it's like, oh, wow. What the heck? Oh, okay, we got to deal with this red coin mission first that I didn't even see. Alright, there we go. As I figure out more about the weapons, I could probably wait a bit. Okay. That probably has more damage than my base weapon, but I'm not gonna go for it. Since I already have us. Been with Mario. Okay, um. Alright, we need to move this all the way to the edge first. This part looks a little bit unusual, you might admit. Well, that's because uh, something's gonna happen if we push this all the way to the end. Alright. Turns out that was a required uh, thing that we had to do. That face will look very familiar, and I'll see why in a minute. 
to. What does this area do, then? It's just a one-off area. With a small secret for a hidden Dissel Ball. Just kind of hidden. And this red's frozen. Oh, I can't... But, uh, for some reason, what the heck? Sometimes the talk range in this is so weird, it's hard to know if you're going to be able to examine things or not. Because just a few minutes ago, I was able to do that. Honestly, the top range in this game does not make sense. It feels like I'm just at a feign and yet it still doesn't work. Alright. I need to see what happened back here. Good old coin mechanic, by the way. Whenever coins appear in this area, they usually show you the way to go next. Alright. Another bonus zone. By the way, I wasn't kidding when I said most of the game is not actually going to be battles. <laughs> Surprisingly enough. A game with a lot of strategy, it seems to have a lot more Mario exploring than anything else, really. That's uh, all you get more awkward as the puzzles get more crude. Since I haven't done half of them, and not even done any in the next area. Okay, that does. I guess one big thing is this gives us the opportunities to get better weapons for Luigi so that when we do eventually reuse them, they'll be a lot more powerful than he was before. Right. So we had to do all that to just do a lot after two. This won't always happen each time. Some this just I'm, this one just happened to be a really long battle. Oh my fell. Once he soared freely overhead, spreading fear throughout the mushroom kingdom. Just look at him now, tingled in gaudy rabbit undergarments. Oh, what cruel pain. Restore the mushroom kingdom to its original state. Fonzie's bell's freedom and dignity depends on it. And, yeah, oh my goodness. Luigi is gonna need to be used almost immediately. In case you haven't noticed, yes, uh, we start to get more of these reach area spots, and since Luigi's one of the only characters that can go really fast... Okay, well, since there's an enemy right here, we'll peach first, since she has the lowest of the stamina. Now, one of Leiji's gimmicks that you could potentially unlock, which I didn't unlock because I'm trying to focus on just getting him as much movement as possible, is you could sometimes have him team jump with two people instead of just one. Okay, I just realized that I, mine dash is not gonna cut it, so I'm just gonna fire in him anyway. Got one enemy right out in the open, we may as well take him out. Then, I guess we could just completely ignore the Smasher. Now, the big hint with most of these areas is, um, unless you need to, you should never be targeting the Smashers, ever. Unless you need to do so for a mask, you're actually better off just ignoring them, because with enough movement, they can be kited around pretty easily and dealt with. It's actually more or less the other enemies, the shooter kind, that you need to worry about more. Alright. I'm gonna move Mario over here. And we'll pass the turn to the enemies on the next setup. This starts to be the part of the game where you have to actually realize what you need to do in order to actually uh, move on. Also, Red Peach is not going to really do well in uh, about readiness. So he is probably going to actually get separated and be on her own for a bit. Anyways, for that reason, we're going to immediately pass the turn to the enemies because we don't want to worry about this. 
Oh yeah, they also get their own name power buff as well. And they could just do a lot of damage for any reason. Okay. How much is this? Oh, We're gonna heal. Let's make Mario some of the damage he just took. Though, well, not even be close to being enough. Though we might get a mushroom to heal ourselves up some more. And, uh, that'll be too much for me. Honestly, you could probably just use whatever in most of the scenarios and be fine, but when you have to deal with a smasher, it just gets really weird, because it's like, it's one of the few enemies where you typically don't want to attack them at all. Instead, you want to focus on just doing the jet of, like, it's one of the few enemies where if you don't want to kill it, then there's no reason you should um, do extra stuff. Oh yeah, I guess that's a dire thing. You didn't really get to see much crits back in the day. Well, that was because they weren't really useful, or rather, didn't really do much of anything at all. And the only reason I say this is because, um... Well, initially, they didn't really matter much. And you're probably confused now what I'm saying is. Originally, uh, the the worldwide enemies didn't really have much they could do at all, so they straight up were just really weak. That's what made World 1 so easy. But now here in World 2, they actually start to get smarter. Like, they evolve as well as we do. So they actually start to gain their own abilities now. And we already kind of saw that with those smasher enemies now knowing M power, uh, adding their own version of M power, and also being able to do another damage. They're also really smart in how they use it now, so they will automatically always combo it too. So that means they'll start by using M power, then they'll immediately combo it immediately following that. And they can just do a lot of damage if they want to. Again, we're not gonna do anything right now because we don't want to necessarily trigger a bunch of women. May's debuff with Sashers is the fact that they straight up uh, cannot control their temper, so with setups, they're very easy to control. These hippers, though, they could go pretty much wherever they want. They're the ones we actually want to focus on if we can. I like how even with a diva, they still took a lot of damage. Okay. Maybe I should have killed that enemy. It's hard to know, though. We'll see. This is actually a longer battle than I initially expected. But I have a way around it. At least the way that I think I'm gonna try. Yeah, okay, cool. I can go up here on this turn. But this actually became more awkward now that there's a wound up there. Thankfully, we have it out. May I introduce to you the most broken option set up in the game? Re rebattle. That's the only way we're going to get golden in most of these chapters. If you get straddling in the first battle, you're probably better off just resetting when you get a chance. Also, now we have better objective or clear indication of where to go. Don't be surprised, this is gonna actually happen a lot. I should have just warned you guys ahead of time, but yeah, like starting now. 
It's gonna be really tough to figure out what the heck we're supposed to do in these battles, so... This is where uh, things are gonna start getting a little bit more awkward to do. If she has this, we could do potentially a lot more damage with that. We could actually do something really interesting also because of it. So another thing you could do that's really interesting about the Sashers is potentially get them to charge multiple times in a row. Since Tampers, Mashers can kind of just go wherever they want and typically just kind of charge where I don't really that I didn't use it to beat right away. As long as it's on the Luigi, we're fine. We're still not going to use our hero sight stuff just yet. But anyways, just to show my point, if I hit with the Luigi right now and make this guy move, the trap can actually trigger and then make a move again. <laughs> so you could just make the move like multiple times and it's really funny. Okay, I think I actually set this up properly this time. Uh, Peach is also in a good spot, so we can have her shield to take the hit now. Of course, he's tanky, so he doesn't die right away. But at least with the shield, it'll be easier. And mm, each did not um, get knocked out of bounds this time, so that was a nice advantage. Okay, we can't immediately refire on the enemy. But Mario can finish this enemy off. If Mario was able to fire on that enemy right away and get a critical like that, it would have been much easier. Okay, well now that enemies are gonna repair, we wanna use our steely stare. I'm gonna wait one turn to use this. Yep. Unlike the last time, we actually have a clearer indication now of where to actually go. The biggest uh, gist of the strat, though, is with all these movement variants, you pretty much just want to use Luigi on them. This is actually where our specific build with Luigi comes into play. It just helps you complete these battles more faster, and can even in some cases cheese certain battles if you have a very specific setup with Luigi. Okay. Fortunately, Hero Sight doesn't get much effectiveness there, but at least it gets used. Yeah, see, that worked out. Alright, um, we're gonna move these characters in the order that we did the last time, so... Bad Peach first. Put you at here, and probably use your sentry immediately to... Get around this barrier. Oh, wow, that did, like, a super crit attack, so it just straight up exploded the barrier right away. Well, now that enemy's out in the open. Alright, we'll just finish him off with Luigi. And just... <laughs> yeah, why not just yeet that one enemy out of existence right there? Really cool. It's probably one of the funnest things to do with the bounce attack, and that's why I actually prioritize that more than anything else. Unless there's like a certain debuff setup, you almost always want to go for bounce over anything else. Okay, well, this battle went a lot better now. For one, Luigi's already up on this higher ground area. And the last time, we didn't even get him there at all in the last turn, so that is a massive improvement already. By the way, although we are only doing two chapters each time, 
You can see why I segmented like that. This game is really long. It gets especially long towards the end. Okay, uh, let's do Luigi first, or actually, he has a cheap map, so we'll just use that on the spot. And uh, he can't do that at all. I was hoping he could just like fire it from like super, super long range. That's one of Luigi's biggest gimmicks, obviously, is having the very long range. Okay, we cannot get a second character up yet. Now see, Luigi had a double gene jump, we could have ended the bubble already, but maybe we could make it work. <laughs> We're gonna use dash to remove the shield. We'll just use this on the spot. We just kinda have to move a G here. Oh well, he'll take a bit of damage, but he's also behind cover, for now at least. We'll try to have Mario catch up. So I love that you know, strategy got Luigi up, or crazy strategy, you got Luigi all the way up to there. This is where it's gonna get a bit tricky. Okay, that there me actually made a terrible mistake going right towards Zaleji and our characters are right that. So even though they have their heel side up, they're about to get completely murked here. We can nearly one-shot this enemy, so let's go ahead and do that right on the spot. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. They also triggered the heel side too. And why not just nick him out while we do that too? And then, because heal site is active on that wire enemy, yeah, Luigi uses his ability. Okay, that actually doesn't do as much damage as I thought. You know what, Mario, use M power, and we'll see if you can't take the hit somewhere instead. I'm gonna try and hit that enemy on the top now. Yeah, if we can't do that. Is that not enough range? Okay, we can hit him from here, just barely. Alright. Yeah, we want Mario to take the hit here. Even though it is boosted for a lot of damage. Now Luigi has a clean run through. And could probably finish the battle next turn. So that was a little bit of a titty battle. I'm thinking with this one of a first battle, the chapter might be over already. You never know. Okay, let's see. Luigi could probably just move here. Yep, and we're done. One of the more awkward battles of the game. I knew it, yeah. So some of these chapters wake up. So that chapter pretty much made up for the one... Who knows what we had to do earlier. So we only had to complete one battle to get that done. Alright. On that note, before I go... VG... Oh wait, no, you do have a double chain jump. I just completely forgot about it. <laughs> it's like, I knew I was forgetting something. And it's like, oh yeah, that's right. I do have double team jump with Luigi. I probably could have done that battle a lot faster if I just used that right off the bat. But then I would have, because then I would have team jump with Mario instead, moved Peach to a diff, uh, Peach to a different location, and then have Luigi double team jump to just finish the battle right away. Because double team jump is pretty broken. And while we're on that, actually, since we are gonna use that a lot. Let's give Luigi some movement upgrade on that, too. So the basic gist with Luigi is we're making him the movement character. He's basically going to have all the movement options in the world. And 
And Luigi's gonna be our dash character, so he's basically gonna be buffing almost exclusively dash, because his effect is he can use vamp ire to heal hit points. So later on in the game, that can help out for certain boss battles, so Luigi is not going to be useless, I tell you. He's gonna be helpful in boss battles. Okay, cool. We got the first rank of heal up. I think my priority with Peach is going to be getting that to at least tier 2, and then when it starts taking longer, we'll increase the range or some other abilities instead. Or have shield absorb more stuff. Or actually give her more health, too. Alright. We're going to do this, though. And Mario's gonna be the tank, so we're gonna give him more HP. Then we're gonna give him more HP again later. Since Mario cannot uh, be swapped out, he needs to have more HP to accommodate this. And we'll even have Mushroom end up to... This is Mushroom regeneration. Although we could set up a little trick where we can uh, do that. Oh, also... BG didn't have his upgrade, but that's because I didn't have it unlocked yet. So we're gonna get this one now. There we go. Oh wow, okay, well that didn't take too long to get to. Cool, this is perfect device to stop, and it ended up being around 50 minutes, but that's probably because that puzzle took so long. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.